Hello and welcome to Gold River Studios. In this video, we're going to be creating a system where you can ride horses. And the faster that you run, the higher you'll jump. So you can see I'm not jumping very high. But if I sprint, I jump a lot higher and I can jump over the fence. And I can ride any one of these horses. If you want all of these assets that I prepared, and also this blueprint for opening and closing the gate, that will be in the pro version on Patreon. What we're doing in this tutorial is just learning how to make this one brown horse. So to get started, we're going to go to characters and then I'm going to right click on any of these and then click show and explore and then go out of that so you can see all of the characters. Next, you want to go to the Lego tutorial folder and go to the horse and then open up the characters and the horse side by side. And you want to go to UE5 files and just copy that and paste it into here and F2 and rename it to horse. So you can go ahead and close out of that and then you'll see that it says horse. And usually it just works. I had to close out of Unreal Engine and reopen it and then everything should pop up. So once we have that done, I'm just going to drag the BP horse into the scene and then open that up and we'll drag this off to the side. Next we want to go to characters character one and then open that up we also want to go to content blueprints interact and then we want to add a new function and call it ride once we do that we can close that and then we want to go to level one content third person input actions and i'm just going to copy and paste any one of these i'm going to call it ride and then go to input mc default plus and just type in ride and the one that I used is C. C to get off and C to get on. Next in the BP character, I'm gonna come up to interact and then I'm gonna type in ride, enhanced input, and you want the ride event. And then I'm gonna come down here and I just wanna copy this stuff right here. So off of started, we want to do a for each loop with break, get overlapping actors, actor, and then we want to check if it implements an interact interface. And if it does, then we want to call the ride message. So control, click, and drag that onto there. And then control, click, and now we have the ride message if we click the ride button. Next, if we go back into the horse, we want to go to class settings. And then we want to go to implemented interfaces. And we want to select interact which I believe it should already be added. Next, we want to fix some of these issues. So come down here to dismount, just delete that and type in ride enhanced input. And then on started, we'll just plug that in. And then it will come over here to riding horse. We need to go to our player info. So content, blueprints, and we want to open the player info, add. And then I'll just call that riding horse. And then on default, I'll set it for false. And then before we can switch this out, we need to fix the player info. So over here, we want to type in player info and then select the set player info. And then it will change this to player info. The object reference, change variable type, then I'll click to disconnect that, plug it back in, compile, and then we want to come back down here to dismount and then type in writing horse, set writing horse, and control drag to switch the pins out, drag that into there and just copy this and go to horse ride and delete that, paste, and then set that to true. And I'm just gonna delete this horse ride. Next, I'm gonna come over to begin and end overlap in the beginning here, and we want to get riding horse, and then control click, drag that into the new pins, that, compile, and then we'll come over to event begin play, and then we want to get the HUD. And I'm gonna set the object type to HUD. You can see there's two, so I'm gonna click on the search arrow and then I'm going to call this HUD01 just so we can tell the difference. So back in horse, we'll click on the HUD and type that in. And we want to do HUD01. Then that just plug that in. Then we want to drag off of here. Then we want to cast to character 01 and control drag off of there. And then as Aragon BP, we're going to come over here and just rename this to BP character 01. And then over here, 
We'll just need to change this to BP character 01. All right, so everything should be working now in Horse BP. I'm gonna come over to level one and in the default pawn class, I'm gonna change this to BP character one and we need to fix the walking in BP character one. It's still set up as the infinite runner and we need to undo that. And then I want to reconnect all of these. So now it should be walking normal. Next, I'm gonna go back to the horse viewport and then I'm gonna click on the widget and we need to create a widget. I'm going to copy and paste the E and I'm gonna call this C ride. Then I'm gonna open that up and I'm just gonna change this to C and then change this to ride. File save, go back to BP horse and then type in C ride, click on that. Next, you want to come into the BP character one, go to the top, click on self, and then type in tag on the actor. You want to add one and then call it player exactly like that. And now if you walk up to the horse, you'll see that it says ride. You can see that there's a lot of clipping. So I'm going to click on the camera boom and the probe size, I'm going to make it 0.1 so that it won't clip so much. And you can see if you click C, you can take over the horse if you Click C again, you jump back off. Now we just need to create the part where it looks like that they're writing. First, I'm gonna go into Assets. Then I'm gonna right click on anything, show and explore, and then open the Lego tutorial folder. We'll see something called Saddle. Drag that in, close it out. And once you see that, I want to come into the horse viewport and then on Saddle 01, I'm gonna click the arrow to bring that in. And then it should be perfectly in line. On the called to mesh, you want to go down here, type in character 01, and then I'm just going to type in idle, and it won't be visible, so you'll have to type visible, and then if you take that, you can see it, and then you'll be able to adjust it and stuff, but for now, we need it to be unvisible, so we'll untick that, and then the static mesh, that is for if you have hair, or a hat, or helmet, and that's also invisible, so you'll just want to untick both the skeletal and the static mesh and then you'll just need to line that up if you click on the skeletal mesh you can click here to pause the animations and then you'll be able to get your hair or helmet on i'm gonna room i'm gonna remove that because he already has hair built into the mesh that's not the recommended way of doing it i would do it separately have the hair as a separate mesh and then just include it separately so then you want to go back in type in visible and you want to untick both of those and then in character one, I want to go to event graph and you want to get event possessed and event unpossessed. And then in here, I usually have a helmet or a piece of hair that's separate. So I would drag that in as well. I don't need to though. So I'm just going to drag in the mesh and the capsule component. You'd also want to drag in the hair part or helmet or whatever if you had that. And then I want to get player info and then is valid. You want to click the question mark and then click P and plug in is valid. And then you want to get writing, plug that in. Off of true, you want to set visibility. So let's just put that right there. And then you want to set collision enabled and you want to set it to collision enabled query in physics. And for this one, you want to make sure that new visibility and propagated children is all ticked. And then you will copy and paste that and then untick new visibility and set this to no collision. Next, you want to hold down B, plug that in, and plug that in as well. And we also want to get the is valid and plug that in. And I'm just gonna drag these out a little bit and then drag the mesh and the capsule component. And I just wanna plug this into all of them. And then also for the capsule component. So once those are all plugged in, you can compile. And if you click play and the horse isn't walking around, that means you need to add a nav mesh bounce volume. I already have one that sets. What that does is it just tells the AI where it's allowed to go. So you can see it's walking around. And if I walk up to it, it'll say C ride. If I click C, I'm in control. And you can see that I'm riding it. If you click shift, you can run, you can jump. And the faster you go, the higher you'll jump. So you can see I'm hardly jumping and if I sprint you can jump a lot higher one more thing I'm gonna do is set the character to visible grab the attach component and bring it up and then I'll bring the character back and then I'll take the attach component and drag it onto the mesh and then with the attach selected I'm going to select the saddle 
and I'm just going to scale this down by a lot and then cancel over the location and the scale and then I'll just move this up and then once you're done click on the character type invisible set that to invisible and now if I jump you can see the character is moving with the jump next go to sound SFX then click add import and then in the Lego tutorial folder go to horse and then select the horse one and horse two hoof I want to take the arrow hit and I'm just going to copy that two times and then I'm going to rename that to horse to horse foot 01 and horse foot 02 and then I'm going to open those up and I just want to switch each of these out for the horse hoof so horse hoof 1 and then horse hoof 2 next I want to go to the characters horse and then the horse and MVP and on the horse step 2 I want to get the horse foot 02 the sound cue and then I want the horse foot 01 for the footstep 1. So now if you listen closely you can hear the footsteps. And the closer you get, the louder they get. And the way this works is in the animations, for example the horse run, I have some anim notifies. And back in the BP, when there's on those notifies, I play the sound. And I get the actor location. And just plug that in and how we set it up in the queue with the 3d sound it makes it work perfectly now you can see that the animations are a little bit wonky i did include the fpx animations for all of these so if you'd like to adjust and change them you may i got these off of a ai rigging site it's kind of like mixamo but for lots of different things vehicles animals people so and it's still in early development so it's not super great we can go ahead and change the animations if you'd like them to be more flawless thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time